Ok guys, it's time for another upgrade. I present to you the judge. Unpack the judge. Let's see why. Right, so as you know my previous build, which I really loved, but it had one big fault regarding noise and temperatures. All of this because of multiple factors which compounded one another. First the team paste in the 4790K started to degrade and I didn't want to do a delete. Then the current very low profile rail coolers are quite limited regarding performance. I was using a Cryorig C7, thus noise and temperatures were really bad. Even in idle for god's sake they were like horrendous. So you can imagine that overclock is out of the window. I mean my motherboard and CPU are built for overclocking and I couldn't even enjoy them even in stock form. So I wanted to upgrade, definitely to a soldered CPU this time. And while I'm at it why not increase the core count because I need the extra horsepower. The Ryzen 7 8900X came to mind as a first choice. But I really wanted a, a very capable mini ITX motherboard. Then I was really excited with the new Skylake X generation plus the new ASRock X299 ITX board. Have you seen this little gem? It has quad memory SOD support, 3 M.2 SSD slots and a full square 2666 pin socket. Holy cow. But I got knocked back on my feet because as we all know by now Intel decided not to solder their high-end platform anymore. This is a goddamn Greek tragedy. Moving along, Dan also updated the case to a future V2 version after another highly successful Kickstarter campaign. The main attraction of course will be the support for an AIO cooler on the bottom of the case. But that's coming in 2018 and I can't wait that long. So I took matters into my own hand. Thus let me show you my journey of modding my V1 case step by step. You'll be surprised what numbers I have discovered. I will link everything that you need in the description down below. Ok, step 1. Strip the case of the hard drive cage, the front USB header, the plastic divider, the power cable, the front two clips for the side panels and the power button. These are all for peace of mind to make sure that you don't damage anything in the modding process. Because we need to make ventilation cutouts in this area right here. Straight off the bat pursuing this mod means that you lose the front header USB, the two front clips for the side panels and the dual hard drive cage. These are all necessary compromises to accommodate the new AIO radiator. Ah, and I almost forgot, to be extra careful I suggest that you remove the PCI riser cable and to point out that you lose the plastic divider as well because it will get in the way of the radiator. So make sure you'll use a video card that has a backplate. Ok then, next chapter please. Step 2 now let's mod the case. The main thing that you need is to create ventilation for the radiator on the bottom. Exactly what the new V2 version will have. This is what you'll need. Again everything is linked in the description. Then get some protection for your eyes, mouth, nose and especially ears and take your time to cut the metal. I went for a simple idea, marked my lines with a sharpie and started to cut. Took me around 1 hour to complete. I made some errors along the way, the Dremel started to escape, fatigue, etc. Hell, looks like Wolverine did it. But I corrected them with some Sharpie again. I know it's a ghetto style but either way these parts I needed to be functional and nobody will see the underneath of the case. Don't forget to finish off any metal residues like the extra burr, then clean the case and let's build our new powerhouse. Step 3 the case is now ready to accept our new build, so let's go and get all the parts ready. I reused the current PSU, the Corsair SFX 600 Watt, the only option really if you want to use an AIO. As for the brain I got a second hand 5960X at a very nice price, hence why I did not take the Ryzen 7. So I have the first 8 core extreme CPU from Intel. This one will surprise us all because he will be the judge of my findings. Then the only motherboard on the X99 chipset in the mini ITX form factor is the ASRock X99E ITX AC. Got one brand new and get this it was the last one in Amazon Co UK stock because as you know it is an end of life product. Talk about karma. As for RAM I maxed out at 32GB Corsair Vengeance LPX low profile DDR4 memory. 
And for the start of the show, the only 92mm AIO from Assetec, the 540LC. A cute little thing, and like the ASRock board, the only one in existence. You need to couple this with the Noctua Slim 92x14mm wide low profile fan, and you are good to go. You see the pattern now, everything was meant to be. Step 4. Construction time. Everything fits eventually on the limit, as we all know by now, we are entering the territory of a niche, of an already niche market. So yeah, take your time, eventually you'll find the best routes for the cables. Custom sets are encouraged, but I need to take some measurements, because I don't know if any companies make cables that malleable. We'll investigate further and update as necessary. Then you'll need M4 screws, which are 16mm long, so you can attach the fan to the red. After that, to secure the Assetec to the case, I used the rubber grommets from the hard cage, plus the short M4 screws which came with a cooler. One hour later, and more fiddling the next morning, finally I can barely close the side panel. Some work left to do, but I don't want to force it right now, and I just want to enjoy the new rig. And here it is guys, the judge. Not the prettiest thing to look at, especially when compared to my red and black OCD build. But we all know that what's on the inside, that really counts. We'll tinker with the wire management in the future, but now let's move to the last part. Step 5. Prepare to be amazed. To mention that all the tests are live, so you can clearly see what's happening. Ambient temperature is at 21 degrees Celsius. And everything is on auto and stock settings. For a reference, I had to keep the 4790K under voltage and I was still getting 75 degrees in gaming and almost 90 in video editing and stress tests, plus the noise was unbearable. I know I had air cooling on the quad core, but even if I tried the new Assetec first on the 7090K, considering that the team had started to deteriorate, I don't think I would have seen great results to make me keep the current setup. We'll do a further follow-up video with improved wire management, overclock of course and some minor cosmetic touches. Until then, take a look at this. Yep, you are seeing right, I am getting better results with an 8-core extreme processor, which is double in physical size, double in core count, and with a 140W TDP, than a quad-core 88W TDP undervolted CPU. Yeah, I know, again, I'm comparing AIO to air cooling, but if you head over to the cases forum, you'll see that Dan discovered the same things. In his test, his 6-core 5820K, also a 140W TDP, had better results than a 7700K with 91 TDP regarding temperatures. Now the extra noise is coming from the video card. As you can see the AIOS pump is dead silent, also the knock to a fan. What an epic combo these little two things are doing. As you can hear this is the max total system sound that I could make the computer do. The video card is the loudest, shortly followed by the PSU when it ramps up in the superposition benchmark. As for gaming, again the numbers regarding noise and temperature are lower in favor of the 8-core soldered CPU than the chewing gum using quad-core 1. 
Regarding frames per second, I gained like 10-15 in Mass Effect Andromeda for the maximum frame rate and at least 20 for the minimum FPS, even though there was a 1 GHz difference favoring the 4790K. Thus, as I promised you from the beginning, I consider this case dismissed. So, there you have it guys, this was my journey to build the smallest, most powerful, while the coolest and not annoyingly loud rig that I could master. Please tell me in the comments what you think and let me know what further tests should I do. Until next time, please subscribe and catch you on the flip side. Alex out.